a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Frankie Lyman Franklin Joseph Lyman, known professionally as Frankie Lyman, was an American rock and roll slash rhythm and blues singer and songwriter. Best known as the boy soprano lead singer of the New York City-based early rock and roll group The Teenagers. The group was composed of five boys, all in their early to mid-teens. The original lineup of The Teenagers, an integrated group, included three African-American members, Frankie Lyman, Jimmy Merchant, and Sherman Garns, and two Puerto Rican members, Joe Negroni and Herman Santiago. The Teenagers' first single, 1956's, Why Do Fools Fall In Love, was also its biggest hit. After Lyman went solo in mid-1957, both his career and that of the teenagers fell into decline. He was found dead at the age of 25 on the floor of his grandmother's bathroom from a heroin overdose. His life was dramatized in the 1998 film Why Do Fools Fall In Love? 1942-56, Early Life Slash Joining the Teenagers Lyman was born in Harlem, New York on September 30, 1942 to Jeanette and Howard Lyman. Howard was a truck driver and Jeanette was a maid. Both also sang in the gospel group The Harlem Airs. Frankie and his brothers Louis and Howie sang with the Harlem Air Juniors. The Lyman struggled to make ends meet, so Lyman began working as a grocery boy at age 10. At 12 in 1954, Lyman heard a local doo-wop group known as the Coupe de Ville at a school talent show. He became friends with the lead singer, Herman Santiago, and he eventually became a member of the group, now calling itself both the Ermines and the Premiers. Dennis Jackson of Columbus, Georgia, was one of the main influences in Lyman's life. His personal donation of $500 helped start Lyman's career. One day in 1955, a neighbor gave the premier several love letters that had been written to him by his girlfriend, hoping to give the boys inspiration to write their own songs. Merchant and Santiago adapted one of the letters into a song called, Why Do Fools Fall In Love? The premiers, now calling themselves the teenagers, got their first shot at fame after impressing Richard Barrett, a singer with the Valentines. Barrett, in turn, got the group an audition with record producer George Goldner. On the day of the group's audition, original lead singer Santiago was late. Lyman stepped up and told Goldner that he knew the part, because he helped write the song. The disc jockeys always called them, Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. 1956, Why Do Fools Fall In Love, Success Goldner signed the group to G Records, and, Why Do Fools Fall In Love, became its first single in January 1956. The single peaked at number 6 on the Billboard Pop Singles chart, and topped the Billboard Ran B Singles chart for five weeks. Six other top Blues 10 singles followed over the next year or so. I Want You To Be My Girl, I Promise To Remember, Who Can Explain? Out In The Cold Again, The ABCs Of Love. I'm Not a Juvenile Delinquent, and, Baby Baby, were also popular teenagers releases. I Want You To Be My Girl, gave the band its second pop hit, reaching number 13 on the National Billboard Hot 100 chart. Goody Goody, was a number 20 pop hit, but did not appear on the Rand Beat chart. The teenagers placed two other singles in the lower half of the pop chart. With the release of, I Want You To Be My Girl, the group's second single, The Teenagers Became Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. An album, The Teenagers featuring Frankie Lyman, was released in December 1956. 1957-65, Solo Career In early 1957, Lyman and the Teenagers broke up while on a tour in Europe. During an engagement at the London Palladium, Goldner began pushing Lyman as a solo act, giving him solo spots in the show. Lyman began performing with backing from pre-recorded tapes. The group's last single, Goody Goody, backed with, Creation of Love, initially retained the, Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers, credit. But they were actually solo recordings. Lyman had officially departed from the group by September 1957. An in-progress studio album called Frankie Lyman, 
and the Teenagers at the London Palladium was instead issued as a Lyman solo release. As a solo artist, Lyman was not nearly as successful as he had been with the Teenagers. Beginning with his second solo release, My Girl, Lyman had moved to Roulette Records. On a July 19, 1957 episode of Alan Freed's live ABC TV show The Big Beat, Lyman began dancing with a white teenage girl while he was performing. His actions caused a scandal, particularly among Southern TV station owners, and The Big Beat was subsequently cancelled. There is no surviving footage, because the episode was taped over, according to Judith Fisher Freed. Lyman's slowly declining sales fell sharply in the early 1960s. Within the span of one year, as a result of heroin use, and the deepening of his voice to a baritone as a result of going through puberty. His highest charging solo hit was a cover of Bobby Day's Little Bitty Pretty One, which peaked at number 58 on the Hot 100 pop chart in 1960 and which had been recorded in 1957, addicted to heroin since the age of 15. Lyman fell further into his habit, and his performing career went into decline. According to Lyman in an interview with Ebony magazine in 1967, he was first introduced to heroin when he was 15 by a woman twice his age. In 1961, Roulette, now run by Morris Levy, ended their contract with Lyman and he entered a drug rehabilitation program. After losing Lyman, the teenagers went through a string of replacement singers, the first of whom was Billy Lobrano. In 1960, Howard Kenny Bobo sang lead on. Tonight's the Night, with the Teenagers. Late that year, Johnny Houston sang lead on two songs, The Teenagers, who had been moved by Morris Levy to end records, were released from their contract in 1961. The Teenagers briefly reunited with Lyman in 1965, without success. 1966-68, Later Years over the next four years, Lyman struggled through short-lived deals with 20th Century Fox Records and Columbia Records. He began a relationship with Elizabeth Mickey Waters, who became his first wife in January 1964, and gave birth to his only child, Francine, who died two days after birth at Lenox Hill Hospital. Lyman's marriage to Waters was not legal, because she was still married to her first husband. After the marriage failed, he moved to Los Angeles in the mid-1960s, where he began a romantic relationship with Zola Taylor, a member of the Platters. Taylor claimed to have married Lyman in Mexico in 1965 although their relationship ended several months later, purportedly, because of Lyman's drug habits. Lyman, however, have been known to say that their marriage was a publicity stunt, and Taylor could produce no legal documentation of their marriage. In Major Robinson's gossip column of June 6, 1966, Zola said the whole thing was a joke that she went along with at the time. He appeared at the Apollo as part of a review, adding an extended tap dance number. Lyman recorded several live performances, but none rose on the charts. His final television performance was on Hollywood A Go Go in 1965, whether then 22, or 23-year-old singer lip cinched to the recording of his 13-year-old self singing, Why Do Fools Fall In Love? On June 21, 1966, he was arrested on a heroin charge, and was drafted into the United States Army in the lieu of a jail sentence. He reported to Fort Gordon, Georgia, near Augusta, Georgia, for training. While in the Augusta area, Lyman met and fell in love with Amira Eagle a schoolteacher at Hornsby Elementary in Augusta. The two were wed in June 1967, and Lyman repeatedly went AWOL to secure gigs at small southern clubs. Dishonorably discharged from the army, Lyman moved into his wife's home, and continued to perform sporadically. Traveling to New York in 1968, Lyman was signed by manager Sam Bray to his Big Apple label, and the singer returned to recording. Roulette Records expressed interest in releasing Lyman's records in conjunction with Big Apple and scheduled a recording session for February 28. A major promotion had been arranged with CHO Associates, owned by radio personalities Frankie Crocker, Herb Hamlet and Eddie O.J. Lyman, staying at his grandmother's house in Harlem where he had grown up, celebrated his good fortune by taking heroin. He had remained clean ever since entering the army three years earlier.
death. On February 27, 1968, Lyman was found dead of a heroin overdose at the age of 25 on the floor of his grandmother's bathroom. Lyman, a Baptist, was buried at Catholic St. Raymond Cemetery in the Throgs Neck section of the Bronx, New York City, New York. I'm Sorry, and Seabreeze, the two songs Lyman had recorded for Big Apple before his death, were released later in 1968. Posthumous Troubles Lyman's troubles extended to others after his death. After Rand B. Singer Diana Ross returned, Why Do Fools Fall in Love, to the top ten in 1981, a major controversy concerning Lemon's estate ensued. Zola Taylor, Elizabeth Waters and Amira Eagle each approached Morris Levy, the music impresario who retained possession of Lemon's copyrights and his royalties, claiming to be Lemon's rightful widow. Lyman had neglected to divorce any of them. The complex issue resulted in lawsuits and counter-lawsuits, and in 1986 the first of several court cases concerning the ownership of Lyman's estate began. Trying to determine who was indeed the lawful Mrs. Frankie Lyman was complicated by more issues. Waters was already married when she married Lyman. She had separated from her first husband. But their divorce was finalized in 1965, after she had married Lyman. Taylor claimed to have married Lyman in Mexico in 1965, but could produce no acceptable evidence of their union. Lyman's marriage to Eagle, on the other hand, was properly documented as having taken place at Beulah Grove Baptist Church in Augusta, Georgia, in 1967. However, the singer was still apparently twice married and never divorced when he married Eagle. The first decision was made in Waters' favor. Eagle appealed, and in 1989, the appellate division of the New York State Supreme Court reversed the original decision and awarded Lemon's estate to Eagle. However, the details of the case brought about another issue, whether Morris Levy was deserving of the songwriting co-credit on, Why Do Fools Fall In Love? Although early single releases of, Why Do Fools Fall In Love? Credit Frankie Lyman, Herman Santiago and Jimmy Merchant as co-writers. Later releases and cover versions were attributed to Lyman and George Goldner. When Goldner sold his music companies to Morris Levy in 1959, Levy's name began appearing as co-writer of Why Do Fools Fall In Love, in place of Goldner's. Lyman was never paid his songwriting royalties during his lifetime. One result of Amira Eagle's legal victory was that Lyman's estate would finally begin receiving monetary compensation from his hit song's success. In 1987, Herman Santiago and Jimmy Merchant, both by then poor, sued Morris Levy for their songwriting credits. In December 1992, the United States federal courts ruled that Santiago and Merchant were co-authors of Why Do Fools Fall In Love. However, in 1996 the ruling was reversed by the Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit on the basis of the statute of limitations. Copyright cases must be brought before a court within three years of the alleged civil violation. And Merchant and Santiago's lawsuit was not filed until 30 years later. Authorship of Why Do Fools Fall In Love currently remains in the names of Frankie Lyman and Morris Levy. Legacy Although their period of success was brief, Frankie Lyman and the teenagers' string of hits were highly influential on the rock and ran B performers who followed them. Lyman's high-voiced sound is said to be a direct predecessor of the girl group's sound, and the list of performers who name him as an influence include Michael Jackson, Ronnie Spector, Diana Ross, The Chantelles, the Temptations, George Clinton, Smokey Robinson, Len Barry, and the Beach Boys, among others. The performers most inspired by and derivative of Lyman and the Teenagers' style are the Jackson Five and their lead singer, and future superstar Michael Jackson. Motown founder Barry Gordy based much of the Jackson Five sound on Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers' recordings. And the Teenagers are believed to be the original model for many of the other Motown groups he cultivated. Lemon's music and story were reintroduced to modern audiences with Why Do Fools Fall In Love? A 1998 biographical film directed by Gregory Nava, also the director of the Selena biopic, Why Do Fools Fall In Love tells a comedic, fictionalized version of Lemon's story from the points of view of his three wives as they battle in court for the rights to his estate. 
The film stars Lorenz Tate as Frankie Lyman, Halle Berry as Zola Taylor, Vivica A. Fox as Elizabeth Waters and Leela Roshan as Elmira Eagle. Why Do Fools Fall in Love was not a commercial success and met with mixed reviews. The film grossed a total of $12,461,773 during its original theatrical run. In 1973, Lyman became known to a slightly younger generation than before with the release of American Graffiti, which included Why Do Fools Fall in Love on its soundtrack in September 1979 at the Santa Barbara Bowl. Joni Mitchell performed a version of Why Do Fools Fall in Love which subsequently appeared on the release of her album of the concert entitled, Shadows and Light, the following September. During the opening mix of the album, Joni Mitchell also spliced sections of, I'm Not a Juvenile Delinquent, into the title track refrains. The full reference him in, No X Mass for John Keyes. On their March 1979 album, Live at the Witch Trials, the song, Harlem Roulette, by the Mountain Goats, off its 2012 album Transcendental Youth, contains reference to Frankie Lyman, the song, Sea Breeze, and Roulette Records. Frontman John Darniel has stated that the song is about the last night of Lyman's life. Frankie Lyman and the teenagers were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1993, and into the Vocal Group Hall of Fame in 2000. Lyman was mentioned in the 1992 Stephen King short story, You Know They Got a Hell of a Band. Lyman is named as the one who cut off the waitress Sissy's finger for trying to help the protagonists, Mary and Clark Willingham, escape from the town of rock and roll heaven Oregon, who is inhabited by musicians like Janis Joplin, Otis Redding, Roy Orbison, and other musicians who died young. The English band Everything, but the girl on their 1991 album, Worldwide, include the song Boxing, and pop music which references Lyman throughout the song. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?